everybody. I'm here with my esteemed colleague, good friend, formulator CEO extraordinaire, Mr. Michael Antonelli. Mike, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Excited about our time together today. Oh, I think we're going to raise the roof on the concept of longevity and IE longevity and peptides and formulas that are going to help people reach a new level. That said, let's jump right in. Peptides, short chains of amino acids. Everybody knows who Andrew Huberman is. He described the peptide as a new kind of wedge in between supplements and prescription pills. Take the baton and roll with that. <laughs> Uh, pe peptides are exploding. It's it's hard to to read a magazine, hear about it, Instagram stories, TikToks about the power of peptides. And I think something that Health Jevity is working really hard to do is source around the world. What are the peptide, these small chain amino acids that are making a significant difference in the body when taken orally? And as you see, there, there's no shortage of these naturally occurring. It's identifying the right dosing, the right complements, to set our bodies up for success. Outstanding. So um, let's just stay with the peptides. Let's get the, the monkey in the room. Let's talk about it. BPC-157, go for it. Yeah, BPC-157, 15, 15 amino acids. It's this incredible peptide matrix that is responsible for repairing facilitated healing. Some people refer to it as the Wolverine peptide. Um, the beauty here is that being it's naturally occurring in our gastric juice, it is orally bioavailable. And this is one that many of our providers continually reach out to us and talk about how amazed they are with the impact it's making, whether it's supporting leaky gut or helping repair and regenerate the body. Um, one thing we find out about BPC in clinical use is how many protocols it's complementing. So I think a lot of doctors start using this more for the gut. And what they start seeing is that patients report that they're sleeping better, they're recovering better from workouts, and that they're just bouncing back more efficient. And so a great place to start as we uh, start our podcast together is the amazing BPC-157. BPC, Mike, tell everybody, what, what does that stand for? <laughs> Body protection compound. Well said. So some of the benefits, to recap what you said, it speeds up tissue healing and recovery. It aids in angiogenesis, which is the regeneration of blood vessels. It helps in the regulation of blood pressure. It reduces post-workout uh, pain. You know, so many of the uh, guys in my age that are still trying to push some weights um, have really given me great feedback, empirical research on the decrease in delayed onset muscle soreness. It's also shown in um, robust data to accelerate bone healing promotes joint and tendon healing. And uh, obviously speaking to me as a chiropractor, that excites me, reduces the risk of oxidative stress. It's all about protecting and healing the gut. And it also helps with gum disease. So um, as I said before my podcast, I suffer from some periodontal disease and things have taken a marked improvement since I've added BPC-157 to my armamentarium. So not that we're done with BPC-157. It is without question the hot topic. It's the, it's the new addition to the high school class. Um, what other nutrients in the longevity space are really effective to mix with it or stand alone? Yeah, that, that's a big question. There is so many incredible nutrients that we're reading about and then sourcing. A couple that stand out is fisetin, right? We look at something that's happening a lot in literature, right? The role of cellular senescence, immunosenescence, zombie cells, and nutrients that can best target it. We're also identifying nutrients that can best harness the hallmarks of aging. So fisetin at the right dose, pulsed correctly, is right up there. Um, it's one of the most potent senolytics that can help put our cells in a better position to either get rid of these zombie cells or revive a zombie cell back to an active, healthy, functioning cell. Um, have, have you hit on this yet? Do you do you talk about Fison or is this brand new for your listeners? Um, I've mentioned it on a couple of other people's uh, podcasts, but I think as far as on mine, it is it's new. So I think you can go into detail or um, you know, Fison that bioactive phytochemical, synergistic with other type of um, 
formulas and nutrients, anti-inflammatory, induction of apoptosis, which it allows cell death, but appropriate cell death. I mean, you use the word senescent cells. So let's jump all over that. Not that I'm trying to take the light off of fisetin. And that's a conversation of senescent cells that Mark Hyman, Peter Atia, Andrew Humerman, the day of sitters all talk about. So I, I'd love you to roll with that for a second. Yeah, what we're seeing is that when cells are senescent, they are inactive and, and have no function or positive function in our body. And they're in this zombie state. And what happens is they impact everything around them. And so they drive this low grade inflammation in the body. And so a high senescent cell burden can lead to chronic inflammation, which we hit on frailty, comorbidities, driving chronic disease. And so we're constantly looking at whether pharmaceutical or nutraceuticals to help ease this burden, help the body remove these senescent cells, or in some cases, rejuvenate. And so fisetin has been one of the main ones on the pharmaceutical side. Dastatinib is one that comes up a lot. Quercetin is another one, another incredible flavonoid that has been shown to help the body respond better to modulate the senescent cell burden. Curcumin, another one that is going to continually to, to come up. Um, genocides, RB1 and RG1 is another. Ergothionine is a really nice emerging ingredient coming from mushrooms. Why a lot of people say, eat your mushrooms. This is uh, Dr. Bruce Ames is trying to get ergothionine classified as a longevity vitamin. Um, we're hoping he does that, but there's brand new data showing ergothionine in its role for helping support neuronal senescence. And so that's one that's in there. Green tea, EGCG, helps the body with the senescent burden and, and so forth. So th there's a lot of incredible compounds that you may already be taken, but you just want to make sure that they're dosed correctly and pulsed correctly to help the body respond as we want. Uh, standing answer, in-depth answer. So senescent cells, they accumulate with normal aging. Um, they impede organ function. They create chronic inflammation. They emit protein-destroying enzymes. Unfortunately, they sh they shorten a healthy lifespan. We'll get into lifespan, health span, vitality, human performance, and the like. So we want to remove these senescent cells appropriately because it confers with healthy longevity. I love the term zombie cells. I always think of the old movies my mom used to make me watch if I took off from school, you know, when I was homesick. And it was the Boris Karloff monster, the zombie cells. So those zombie cells, those senescent cells are spewing inflammation, which goes to a bigger framework of what we're really trying to do. Everything so far you've talked about is really to allow for our ecosystem and our overall environment to be anti-inflammatory. So within those nutrients that we're talking about in the space, which would come to the forefront for anti-inflammation. Yeah, you know, we we look consistently in the literature and a couple of botanicals that rise to the top are curcumin, tetrahydrocurcumin, right? The the incredible uh, ingredient there, thousands of studies showing. Boswellia, quercetin again. Perilla seed's another one that I think is really underappreciated when we think about mast cell dysfunction and Th1, Th2, but there's a newcomer on the block that we've been reading and, um, and tracking, and that's Acmela. Acmela is a flower that's grown and harvested on the island of Sardinia, one of the blue zones. And in folk medicine, doctors would give this flower to their patients to chew on to numb the mouth. It's actually called the toothache plant. And so Acmela, again, with the perilla, the quercetin, the boswellia, the, the, uh, the curcumin, again, these are really beneficial to helping the body resolve this low-grade inflammation that is the backbone of so much. Um, and I know you talk about it a lot, right? We look at specialized pro-resolving mediators as another really useful solution to help the body better cope and mediate on a daily basis. Yeah, we all know that our goal should be to manage and modulate inflammation. Inflammation leads us down a path of inflammaging which is one of our longevity hacks, if you will. So that's really where we were talking about. Inflammation from inside ages us from inside. Uh, the pro-resolving mediators, people have heard me talk about, allow for the resolution of inflammation. They work very synergistically with omega-3 fatty acids. What I really wanna know is what's next in your daily regimen? 
to move the needle after these high level, interesting nutrients and compounds. Yeah, I, I think from there, we're, we're really seeing peptides be the difference makers. So I, we have doctors coming to us every day. We see, you know, patients always reaching out on social media saying, I'm an avid supplement user. What do I do to upgrade my regimen? How do I get better results? Or I've reached a plateau. What do I do? That's where you really tap into the world of peptides. And again, we now have the largest variety of orally bioavailable peptides that the body takes and activates and signals what needs to be done, right? So we hit on BPC-157 already. You know, we, we are looking deeply at the rolothymic peptides to help rejuvenate our immune system. And then to things like food grade peptides, like PeptiStrong from fava beans for anabolics. So things that were naturally occurring in nature, peptides that we can then dose correctly to activate things like muscle protein synthesis or peptides that help regulate leptin and ghrelin for satiety. Um, because that's another really big area where people kind of say, how do I control my cravings? How do I manage blood sugar more effectively? And then things like ACE inhibiting peptides, right? Blood flow, circulation. These are major areas. There's also antimicrobial peptides. Um, one of them that comes to mind is KPV. And so looking at helping put the gut in a better position to be the defense, to be the spark plug, and then looking at other areas in the body that seem to best benefit from these signaling molecules. Great stuff. You know, we probably could have asked this at the outset, but I wanted to make sure we got into the weeds and really shaved it down so people have some clarity. Without question, longevity has taken the world by storm. By 2028, the longevity market is, is expected to reach $180 billion. Research shows that these trends slow the process of cellular aging, decrease cognitive function, and delay Crohn's disease onset, to say the least. Now, why is understanding longevity so important? You know, I, I think something that really came to the forefront during COVID was some of the big underlying reasons of why some people did better than others. We saw age be a major driver. We saw metabolic health be a major driver. Aging is one of the biggest factors behind chronic disease. Uh, Dr. David Sinclair's book, we look at Tony Robbins, we look at Mar Dr. Mark Hyman. A lot of these books now are talking about aging being a hopeful area of modifying, right? So is aging a disease? Can we slow down the rate we're aging? Can we improve the quality of aging? And this sets up a conversation that is at a, the forefront of a lot of our talks, which is lifespan versus health span. And what are those things we could do to best harness the rate we're aging? You know, are we bound to what's on our birth certificate? And how do we feel better, right? Chronological versus biological aging. Things you're talking about so much on your podcast and in social media or when you're lecturing all over the world. So the real question is about longevity. And we talked about aging. How is longevity a little different than anti-aging? Or maybe I will uh, sweeten the pot a little bit. You did a great job of expressing that longevity is the, you know, your lifespan, how long you live versus health span, how long you are healthy or essentially without chronic disease. In America now, there's an 11 year span or difference between those two themes, which turns out to be approximately 18% of our life. So, you know, when you're in my age, in my 50s, and you're looking at the average American at 66 has the start of chronic disease, there's no way I see that horizon. Now, the also idea of, like you said about longevity, is vitality, human performance. For me, anti-aging, you know, we were in that space where they talked about anti-aging and it was more like, you know, take a Botox shot, you know, use a moisturizer for wrinkle cream. You're talking about living longer, looking good still, and performing and doing things that people in previous decades were not able to do. That's right. And it starts from the inside out, right? So gut health is, and, and there's no shortage of literature coming out on a daily basis on the role of the microbiome being such a major contributor to quality of aging. And you talked about it earlier. It's not about the race to live to 120. It's how do we maximize every single day we have the privilege of waking up? 
And what are things we can take to best support that? What are the lifestyle modifications we should be looking at? What is movement defining by, you know, some people that's just going out and walking 20, 30 minutes. Some it's going to the gym. It's weight bearing exercise, right? All of these things are impacting why when you went to your high school reunion recently, you looked as great as you did. And you look at some people in the room and you're saying, what are they doing that they look 20 years older than me? What has happened? And these are things we do have control over. So it's not in our genes. So our genes are not our destiny. <laughs> that is a slogan that was popular maybe a decade ago. But what we're starting to learn is that we do have control. The genes are not our destiny. They do have impact and influence. But there's a lot we can do to reverse the cards we were dealt. Let's talk about some lifestyle hacks since we're talking about things that we can do. You're talking about lifestyle hacks, supplements, changes in diet. Share some lifestyle hacks and really emphasize the concept of intermittent fasting because that's another topic that's really hot right now. It is. Yeah, it's, you know, all over different types of fasting, fasting mimicking diets. So really how do we put our body in a position to you know, induce autophagy and this cellular cleanup. And a couple of nutrients that are coming up in the forefront of that is spermidine. Um, spermidine is one of the hottest nutrients over the last couple of years because of its ability to, to be a fasting mimetic. And some people are getting that from wheat germs. Some are looking at other sources to avoid gluten issues. But that is an incredible nutrient that you could add into your regimen to supercharge a lot of what you're doing on the lifestyle side. So that is one thing that we've seen a great deal of confidence and feedback on, just adding some of these things, right? Spermidine, looking at other epigenetic aging support like luteolin and apigenin, um, balancing and supporting methylation like trimethylglycine, and then some of the usual suspects, right? Transresveratrol, terastilbene, Quercetin again comes up. Alpha ketoglutarate is another great one. So we're always looking at things that we could take to enhance all the other hard work we're doing on a daily basis. Now that intermittent fasting, as we said earlier, produces a theme or a mechanism called an autophagy, which is the breaking down of old cells, taking the debris and making new cells. So intermittent fasting gives you that internal uh, mechanism. It also works by resetting the circadian rhythm. And I know you're looking at some nutrients to help with the circadian rhythm. And lastly, intermittent fasting also has a bit of a reduction in caloric intake because you're closing a window on where you eat. A 2023 recap on longevity showed that reducing caloric intake by 12% improved cell senescence and slowed the pace of aging. So for that circadian rhythm, what would you, what do you, what do you got? Yeah. I mean, the, the circadian rhythm, you know, we're seeing a lot emerge on, you know, redefining the use of melatonin for that, um, especially at higher levels, which is really incredible. Um, you know, one of the natural producing hormones in our body. And so melatonin has been coming up, you know, we, we hit on the role of spermidine. Some people do turn to BPC-157 for this as well. And, you know, another of the many influences that that particular peptide has, um, these are some things that are in the wheelhouse. What we're seeing is that most people aren't sleeping right and it's impacting their quality of life. It's, it's impacting their day. So also looking at things of awakening the neurotransmitters upon awakening that could also help balance the circadian rhythm. What we're also uh, reading and seeing translate very favorably is a metabolite of caffeine called paraxanthine that will also help reset and balance the circadian rhythm. So um, you know, lion's main functional mushrooms is another big area. And what we're also seeing is that people are in, you know, sensitive to certain things that they're including in their lifestyle every day, certain foods, certain beverages. Many people don't handle caffeine well, but they continue to drink it every day. And so looking at ways to biohack or support the body's metabolism of caffeine better to help then give them the energy they want, reduce the crashing and reset and optimize their circadian rhythm. You know, that circadian rhythm also resets with your microbiome. So mm -hmm. if we could segue to that, and interestingly enough, 
uh, some of the key components to help our microbiome or probiotics that we like are now, you know, acromancia and bacillus subtilis, both of which have showed in a plethora of research most recently to really help with avoiding leaky gut. And if you avoid leaky gut and you mix a good healthy lifestyle with intermittent fasting, you're now going to perpetuate a ecosystem that's positive. So again, I'm going to pass the mantle to you and let you talk a little bit about Bacillus subtilis, a quality prebiotic, you know, differentiated pre and probiotic. And, you know, I'm going to load up your plate right now and say, let's don't forget, we at some point got to get to serum bovine immunoglobin. Yeah, and, and they go hand in hand, right? I, I always say, well, choosing the ideal probiotic that is able to survive a variety of different temperatures and pHs in the body, and that seems to be a, a recurring trend pointing to spores. And so you hit on the subtilis, uh, coagulins is another one. So ID verified is always a plus to link it back into published studies, incredible shelf st uh, stability. But those are really useful for acute and chronic situations. So looking at things like bloating, constipation, indigestion, the spores are phenomenal at addressing this quickly, but then also looking at it long term to be something you could induce into your body daily for that continuous support. Um, you also talked about immunoglobulins. We're both real big fans of immunoglobulins. Um the ones that we're seeing, right, binding to pathogens, multiple pathogens to help the body re, you know, re inoculate and reproduce the right floor, but getting rid of the bad pathogens. There's even new data on the immunoglobulins to support detoxification that is emerging. So we're looking at, you know, we, we, we talked about the spore biotics, the role of immunoglobulins to help create the right environment in the gut to support intestinal permeability. And then looking at the pre and postbiotics, things like tributrin, one of the only butyrates that have been proven clinically to reach the colon. So we think about the role of short chain fatty acids, immunoglobulins, probiotics, things that are needed to help plug in and support leaky gut that so many are who are listening are struggling with. Yeah, I, I believe that, you know, and I've said it many times, gut is the epicenter of your health. Everybody knows that's sort of my phrase. But I don't think we speak enough about the gut and the gut's impact on immunity in reference to longevity. As I've said before, I believe that longevity is turning on the health switches. I do believe the master switch is having a robust, resilient immune system. So I know you've got some cutting edge formulas and cutting edge nutrients that really help create a robust, rejuvenative, resilient immune system. That's right. So, you know, we're we're on the same page. The gut, the role of the microbiome and longevity are going hand in hand. And every day there's publications confirming that. And so from there we look at, well, telomere health, mitochondrial health, DNA support, while also helping the body manage the viral load and inflammation load on a cellular level. And so we look at things that have been proven like AC11 cat's claw, especially at the right dose. There's over 12 patents awarded. It's been proven to support telomere length and health. It's great for repairing damaged DNA. It's also really meaningful to support that excess viral load to mitigate and modulate. Then we look at things like 2-HOBA hobamine, right? Sunscreen for the cells. Um, this is one from buckwheat along with the buckwheat peptides that also helps connect not only the gut immune uh, connection, but just overall immunity and rejuvenating our immune system to make it more robust. Again, linking back to longevity. And then things like sulforaphane, right? Eat your broccoli. That's what we all heard growing up. Um, a lot of us, when we cook broccoli, we're losing a lot of the key nutrients. So, or we don't break it down correctly. We're relying on our gut that's already needs to be fixed and optimized. So adding things like the myrosinase enzyme to the sulforaphane is always a plus. Um, should be utilized. We talked about it earlier. Looking at so the spermidine to induce the cellular cleanup is also really beneficial. And ergothionine, you're going to hear me talk about ergothionine a lot. It's one of my favorite nutrients for longevity. Um, and all our mitochondria has ergothionine receptors, but we don't make it. So we need to go to an outside source to get it 
and uh, make sure we get it at the right doses. Excellent. Outstanding. This, you know what? There, there's been such a windfall of nutrients pointed towards longevity. Typically, we see something come about, a new topic or a revitalized topic come about. And, you know, you and I look and go, that'll last three months, maybe six. If it's got legs, it's a year. This doesn't have legs. This has supported legs. This is year two. This isn't going away. This is something that we're going to consider a staple, like when the gut came out 10 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago was, uh, with their interval improvements. But I think one of the things that also resonates with a lot of people now is the age-related causes of protein shortfalls. So we now know that we have to eat more protein as we get older than we did as we, when we were younger. Tufts University in 1998 stated that the first sign of uh, aging was the loss of muscle mass. Gabrielle Lyons talks about muscle mass being the longevity organ. I like to talk about muscle mass and muscle to fat ratio. The problem is that as we age, we get an inad inadequate intake of protein. We have reduced ability to use available protein. So hence we have a greater need. But more so than just consuming it, we also need certain nutrients to support or coenzymes muscle protein synthesis. Number one question I got asked about BPC-157, does it support muscle protein synthesis? Yes, the answer is yes. It is a game changer that you can layer into that protocol. You know, BPC-157, it is going to support uh, the growth hormone receptors. It's going to help support increase of muscle protein synthesis. It's not the only peptide that does that, right? We look at the thymic peptides, some people refer to it as TB500, but thymus and beta-4, especially the fragments that are orally bioavailable, can be layered with BPC to create that Wolverine stack. We also see in our formula longevity, PeptiStrong, the AI-discovered peptide matrix that are anabolic supportive. So increasing muscle protein, uh, protein synthesis fourfold compared to milk proteins. We look at this as supporting fast and slow muscle fibers we see it helping the body better respond to workouts, both in better reps and better recovery. It also helps modulate inflammation induced by exercise. So we look at peptides that are gonna be many listeners after this, this episode's best friend to really supercharge everything you're already doing. And then we look at things like RB1 and RG1, right? The RG1, the genocides that support senescent burden within the muscle, freeing that up. And the RB1 is responsible for the gut muscle connection. So these are things that if it's not on your radar, definitely take a look to see if it makes sense adding to your current regimen. So we just talked about muscle. You know, everybody wants to build muscle, be strong, look great on the beach. But the opposite is having too much body fat. So certain drugs like Ozempic come to mind. And everybody knows I am not a big fan of Ozempic. Um, I did have a telling conversation with a very good friend of mine that was a medical doctor. And he gave me his litany of reasons for why he would use it with somebody who was 350 or 400 pounds. With that being said, there's always a better option. There's always another option. And you and I both think the better option is a natural approach. So share with some people your anti-Ozempic protocol. Absolutely. And, I, and we're both in agreement, right? There's so much out there that should be considered as a first line of therapy before going the GLP-1 route. You know, so we've been working really hard with our researchers, our frontline providers on first taking a step back and better understanding what are the underlying mechanisms causing the dysfunction. Whether you've tried all these diets and didn't work, you reached a plateau, or you're just not getting the goals and hitting the gains that you want. And so Glucose disposal issues is at the forefront, insulin resistance, looking at things like ghrelin, leptin, AMPK, adiponectin levels. These are other subsets of causing the issue. Um, having issues beijing your white fat, looking at things to help stimulate your basal metabolic rate. So we took a look at all the literature and identified several natural ingredients that all had different abilities to modulate some of the things we just talked about. Then we looked at, well, what are the right doses to set us up for sustained success? So actually going under the hood of the car, rewiring, 
and helping the body better fix the metabolic cause of dysfunction. And so one thing we have is the satiety peptides, DNF10, eight-week clinical study with over 130 participants at the 500 milligrams, the average participant consumes 600 less calories a day just on the role of peptides, further supporting our use of that particular ingredient. The next piece, you know, this is uh, all over social media, nature's ozempic, right? Berberine. But many people to hit the dose that's necessary in the literature with standard berberine get GI issues. So we've sought out the only next generation form of berberine called dihydroberberine. It's actually in the gut what berberine converts into. This has five times better bioavailability, double the half-life, and no more GI distress. And so that's the next piece in this wheel of helping. Now, from there, we look at things like L-BABA. L-BABA is a metabolite of L-valine. It's produced only during high-intense workouts. So we worked with the one group that has synthesized L-BABA on its own to either augment a workout or on days we're not working out to replace it and put the body in a state where it's beijing that tricky white fat. Now, from there, we look at some of the other really well-researched things. Bitter melon, a really high-end, high-activity, organic-grown bitter melon that's only harvested three times a year in India. That's in here at the full study dose at 500 milligrams. Then we look at things like Actoponin and Inuslim that are activating AMPK. And then rounding it out with a really unique extract of ginger, which is a non-thermogenic stimulant where it's burning 100 calories a day with no other lifestyle change and further supporting the l but to beige that sticky fat, um, the tricky fat, which is the white one. And this is all working together. And what we're seeing with this formula, whether it's a 30-day window, 90-day window, this has been a difference maker in many people's regimen in addition to that movement we talked about earlier, into eating right, to doing the food sensitivity testing to see what are those triggers. Let's uncover what might be also causing the lack of results. These all together are the perfect storm to set our bodies up for the results that hasn't been achieved yet. So in addition to lifestyle changes, like you said, exercise, eating healthy, Testing and not guessing for food sensitivities, leaky gut, intermittent fasting, hormesis, using hot and cold exposure. One of the key levers for a longevity would be including these peptides as your main supplement source. That's right. And these are a new multivitamin for, for many. They're integrating peptide therapy short term in their regimen to do a lot of the heavy lifting and then to reset and reanalyze what are now the biggest health goals you're faced with after you've reached some of, some of those health goals that you've been wanting to. And so we get access a lot. Is this something I need to take long-term? No. Uh, the goal is to have this provide the outcome you've desired and then reevaluate where you're going now with your wellness journey. You know, it's a question I always say for the end with everybody. What possessed you to get into this field? I mean, I've known you for almost two decades. You were literally right out of college. I still can't believe, you know, you don't look your age. So longevity has been good to you. Um, what possessed you to go from the functional medicine sphere? Not that you're not in it, but really to go to a medically adjacent type of theme in longevity and health longevity. A great question. You know, I, I've seen firsthand medicine fail people I love. I've also have been part of some of the biggest nutraceutical organizations globally and seen incredible innovation passed on for, for whatever reason. And felt I just felt that for me to make the biggest impact, to put the listener and their health journey first, I had to do this on my own. I had to disrupt what was going on. We had to create collaborations that no one's been willing to do, put together nutrient stacks and dosing that no one's been willing to do in order to make the biggest difference in the community. And so that's what Healthgevity stands for. We're here to help optimize your health span, improve your quality of life, and be a brand that you can trust and go to when you need to make the biggest difference in your life. Well, Mike, I'm compelled by your mission statement, if you will. Um, it's been a pleasure. We like to keep everything tight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to come. There's always part two. 
It's Mike Antonelli of Health Jeopardy, Dr. Rob Silverman, Moving Health Alternatives, always yours in health.